So earlier in the show, I promised you a segment about a black male PowerPoint. I provided no other context for why we would be talking about Dan Snyder's black male PowerPoint. But I, I completely heard that wrong, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you say black male weird. Well, this too much male. space in between. <laughs> this is all germane to the topic of Mark Davis's. Well, okay. He Don is not Va- a black male. Don Van Natta, we're bringing you in to clean up the way I've been saying black male Dan PowerPoint. Dan would be proud of this guest intro. <laughs> it's one of the worst I've ever heard. Don Van Natta <laughs> is a multiple Pulitzer Prize winning <laughs> reporter. He has a bombshell, as he tends to have, on ESPN.com about Mark Davis and Roger Goodell and John Gruden's emails, which is why the black male pun happens to be a pun that resonates here. But Don, thank you for joining us. Great to be with you, Pablo. How's everybody doing? We're doing fantastic, but we're trying to make sense of a story that is very complicated and very long and full of intensive actual journalism. So if I were to ask you, Don, what the hell did you find out in this extensive reporting with Seth Wickersham about the John Gruden emails? What would you say? I would tell you that the John Gruden email leaks that occurred in October of 2021 Uh, that there was a large cast of characters, far greater cast of characters than was previously known, who were responsible for that leaking. It starts with Dan Snyder and Dan Snyder's law firm, Rock Nation, Jay-Z's group, a woman named Desiree Perez, we were told. People believe that she was involved in the leaking, as well as the NFL League office and Roger Goodell. We have people pointing fingers at all of those people, But the real takeaway, Pablo, is the fact that this began with Dan Snyder trying to ingratiate himself with Roger Goodell, trying to end a punishment that was very light to begin with. And in basically greenlighting these leaks against Gruden, it triggered a chain of events that led to Gruden. I'm I'm sorry, to Snyder being forced to sell the team. Right. So the John Gruden emails, to recap briefly, this was the story that came out in the Wall Street Journal, October 2021, a blockbuster when John Gruden was working for Monday Night Football. He had sent these emails in an exchange with Bruce Allen, then the GM of the Washington football team, in which he called DeMorris Smith, the NFLPA executive director, DeMorris. He used a racist trope to describe DeMorris Smith, a black man. And all of it felt like a matter of time until he was ousted. Of course he was. But you're now saying, Don, that there is this, there is a murder mystery, so to speak, around who leaked the emails. But Dan Snyder, explain how Dan Snyder is squarely a suspect. Well, he's, he's, he's always been the main suspect, Pablo. In fact, the story we did last October uh, for ESPN, uh, we all but said that the league office was certain that he was the person responsible for the leaking. But after doing a lot more digging, it turns out, as I said, there's many more people that had access to these emails and had motives to leak them. And one of the very interesting people that we found out uh, and we were told was involved in the leaking is that email you just referred to, the the first email that was leaked, that Gruden wrote this racist email about DeMora Smith, the NFLPA executive director, We were told uh, by a source who Smith spoke to directly that Smith bragged that he was the one responsible for leaking that to the Wall Street Journal. Now, I should say that Tamora Smith declined to speak with us uh, through a union spokesman. Uh, So there is a large cast of people that had access to the emails and had motives. And, And one of the really important things is the week of those leaks, there was a leak to the Wall Street Journal. There was then a leak three days later to the New York Times. Early that week, these emails went to Roger Goodell. They went to his desk. He reviewed them. And then in a matter of 48 to 72 hours, the leaks began. Don, there was also a Rock Nation element to this, too, and people in Snyder's camp who may have been implicated in this. But is it possible that more than one person or persons could have leaked the emails because there are so many people with motives here? Yes, that's that's very likely, uh, if not absolutely true in what we discovered through the reporting. Uh, Rock Nation has a contract with the NFL Uh, to help on social justice messaging. It's a $25 million contract that was signed back in 2019. Desiree Perez is the CEO of Jay-Z's Rock Nation. Desiree Perez 
is also a member of the commander's board and of directors, and she's very close to Dan and Tanya Snyder. So Perez is sort of the linchpin, according to sources that we have, both legal sources and league office sources, that kind of is the conduit, allegedly, to get the emails from Dan Snyder and his law firm. And by the way, the law firm is called Reed Smith. They're a New York law firm. They have clients, uh, both Dan Snyder is a client, and so is Rock Nation. And so the emails go from Dan Snyder greenlighting them, Desiree Perez and Rock Nation allegedly being in the middle, to the league office. From the league office, uh, they allegedly get to Demora Smith with that first leak. I mean, it's a winding road. It's a complicated story. Um, but we talked to nearly three dozen people over the course of many months, and uh, it's all laid out on ESPN.com. But, Don, this is David Sampson talking. Are you suggesting or do you think that but for these leaks that Snyder would be skating and he'd still be an owner and not be forced to sell? I think this all started because of the workplace culture, the sexual harassment. That's what got Dan Snyder eventually thrown out of the game. There's no question about that, David. You're right. But by the fall of 2021, you have to remember that there was a punishment that the NFL put out in July of 2021 against Snyder that Goodell meted out very light punishment in hindsight. Uh, It was a $10 million fine that was leveled against the commanders. And Snyder had this very hazy suspension, and I'm using air quotes around it. He really you know, he had basically a few months he had to stay away from the team. And as we report in our story, Snyder all but dictated the terms of his punishment, including offering suggestions for the press release that was released about the punishment. Hmm. And then so in, fast forward to the fall of 2021, he's antsy. He's anxious to get back, attend league meetings, be seen on the field before games. And Goodell at that point doesn't want any part of it. Now, why that occurred, I don't know. Is it possible that owners thought the punishment was too light because he's not widely liked? But in any event, what happens is Snyder believes if he can actually find a way to get these emails out and give Goodell an opportunity to basically, and this is the language of our sources, take out Gruden. And Gruden is somebody uh, who had a very difficult relationship with Goodell going back years. Then uh, that is, that's what motivated Snyder. We have reporting, David, that shows very clearly that after these leaks occurred within a week, Congress opened up, this congressional committee opened up an investigation of Snyder and the commanders and the NFL. It led to new allegations of sexual misconduct against Snyder the following February. And we have many sources telling us if it wasn't for the leaks, there wouldn't have been a congressional investigation and Snyder very likely would have skated. One of the things I'm endlessly fascinated by, Don, whenever I talk to you about your reporting, is what happens behind these closed doors. And so the blackmail PowerPoint, M-A-I-L, tell us about the blackmail PowerPoint. So the blackmail PowerPoint is something that occurred in the NFL League office in late June of 2021. Snyder is facing a punishment by Roger Goodell for the toxic workplace culture, for the sexual uh, harassment allegations that were first reported by the Washington Post in the summer of 2020. Uh, Beth Wilkinson did this massive investigation, as you recall, she's a Washington, D.C. attorney. Uh, There was an expectation by all the witnesses that there was going to be a final report, which was never released. So the lawyers for Snyder, led by Joe Tacopina, who is also a lawyer for Donald Trump, show up in the league office on behalf of Dan Snyder. And in this PowerPoint, they've got a whole bunch of emails of league executives, including Jeff Pash, who is the NFL general counsel, saying off-color things. It's not misogynistic. It's not anything as bad as the Gruden emails. But basically the point that was made by Takapina and the other lawyers is, look, how dare you try to judge Dan Snyder when you've got these same kinds of issues in your own office? And so around the league office, the attorneys were stunned when they saw this and saw the kind of hardball that Snyder and his lawyers were playing against them. And they dubbed that PowerPoint 
the blackmail PowerPoint. They felt it was Snyder attempting to blackmail them with these emails, threatening, without saying it, but the message was clear that they would be leaked to the public if Goodell did not go lightly on Snyder. And guess what happened? Goodell went very lightly on Snyder with the punishment, and those emails were never leaked, at least not until October of 2021, some of them. And this is such a mess. Right now we're looking at the commander's sale being approved somewhere in the next week or 10 days. And I know that, and I, I wonder if you've gotten this with all your reporting, Roger Goodell would just as soon, as well as all the owners, that Daniel Snyder disappears. And once Josh Harris takes over, they don't want any more articles about this. They don't want anyone talking about Danny Snyder. Do you have that same view? Oh, absolutely. Snyder has no friends left in the league. Uh, when we did our story last October, David, that reported that Snyder was telling people around the league that he had dug up dirt on fellow owners and on Commissioner Goodell, that story dropped in the middle of October of last year. Just three weeks later, Snyder announced that he was going to sell the team. He ran out of any goodwill um, once that story dropped, it, it stunned a lot of people around the league, um, what we reported. And you're absolutely right. Goodell doesn't want a story like this out. They don't want any more discussion of Snyder. They still have another shoe to drop, though. Mary Jo White is conducting uh, an investigation. She's about, been at it about a year, and we're still waiting for her report to come out. Uh, it's actually been more than a year. It's been about 16 months and we're waiting for that report to come out about Snyder and very specific allegations against Snyder personally. And whether that will come out before July 20th when the owners meet to vote on the Josh Harris group, we'll just uh, we'll have to wait and see. Don, one last question real brief from you is what surprised you the most? I feel like you're just generally numb. You must be numb to just all of the things you discover <laughs> because you've been in this rabbit hole for so long doing excellent, excellent journalism. What staggered you the most out of all of this? I have to say that it's probably the fact that there are owners. There are four of them that Seth Worker-Sham and I spoke with that say they believe Roger Goodell personally had something to do with the leaks. Goodell denied just a couple of weeks after the leaks to both the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times on these Gruden emails that he had anything to do with them. He told all the owners that in an executive session. He looked them all in the eye. And yet there are still four owners, at least that told us on background, that they don't believe the commissioner. They believe that the commissioner uh, had enough motive, had enough reason to do it. And I think that's the thing that surprised me the most in the reporting. Don Van Atta, thank you for your journalism, your reporting, as always, man. Thanks, Pablo. Great to be with you. Thanks, man. I have done a job teasing some stuff, okay? We have the most Stugats Stugats has ever been coming up from Tahoe. We have www.pablo.show, which is a place where you can find updates at some point about what I'm up to. And also, Jess has an F1 minute of some sort that I have been promised. And so, Jess, what do you, what do you got? Major breaking Formula One news, everyone. Daniel Ricardo is back. He <sighs> is taking over... Nick DeVries' seat at AlphaTauri, and he will be racing back in Formula One after only a 10-race hiatus where he was the reserve driver for Red Bull. It is shocking. It is news that I think people might have, well, there you know, is. there were rumblings of it for, for weeks. We knew Red Bull, something fishy was going on there, and they didn't really give Nick DeVries their entire attention at Team AlphaTauri. And maybe Sergio Perez is... Uh, Poor right, go ahead. performance and qualifying has also led to this, and they maybe are looking to put Daniel Ricciardo back in the top team with Max Verstappen. But it is an absolutely shocking turn of events for Formula One, for Team Red Bull, for Daniel Ricciardo. What happens to the ESPN Grandstand show with him and Will Arnett? Mm, I don't know, time. but he is back. Wow. <laughs> Lucy, you plotting. Yes. That was great, Jess. That was. Thanks. Well done. It's well done. Deal. It's a big does, deal. Everyone. Does he have a nickname? Because when you said Daniel Ricardo, I, I wanted to do the Stugatz thing, but I didn't He's know. He's the Honey what Badger. It, yeah. Mm. Now I know. D I Rick. didn't realize the F1 minute was actually 60 seconds. Yeah. I thought it was just an update, and you because I wanted to hear more about this. Did he sign a long term deal? Is it just for the rest of this season? It appears to be just for the rest of the season. Time. Sir, <laughs> damn it. 
God forbid we get any educational information. Pablo, apparently, you know how we're, we're in gonna, America, dude. We've been a little allergic to sports this week. I mean, I'm no. happy to carry the mantle for the sports watching fans, having been the only person who I think actually, you know, I mean, other than the home run derby, which I didn't watch, I've been glued. The All Star Game. I've been glued to my television or whatever it's called, the All Star Game. No, both. That's I didn't two watch nights. either. The I had a migraine on game. Monday night. But everything else I've been watching, and Formula One has been just absolutely electric lately. Wait, so if you want sports. I got sports. No, listen to Golik and Smeddy off the looking glass in DNF. There's ah. there's your sports. And Montgomery and Company. And listen to our, our next guest. Do we have him in the Zoom? Do we have him? I think he's there, even though he, he texted he just me no. Lurking? He's muted on Zoom right now, so he's going to have to unmute. Oh. Is he just like lurking and is not going to pop out until yeah. it's is actually it? time for to have, like, what a tease this is going to be. Dominique what will join us at some point. About? I'm sure he'll just bombard this segment, but just continue. Didn't you guys want to talk gladiators or something? We had a whole plan. Did we? And y- Yes. The whole plan the, is when Dominique was coming, what time. But this is on Dominique have, because he told yeah, me Dominique no, lied to us. he wouldn't be ready till this time, and then he just appeared in the Zoom. No, so. but he just wanted to make sure that everything was working, mm-hmm. but he's going to come on when he told us he was going to come on. This is good executive producing by uh, Chris Cody. No, no, Don't I told him. Chris Cody. I told him to bring him in. I told him to bring him up. All right, I, I called Chris the audible. Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> Dominique, talk to us. Unmute yourself. This is going great. I love Dominique Pablo, so much. What is wrong with you? How is he going to I do- said I was going to do un <laughs> teases. And you ended up making them worse than ever. Hold on. We can't hear you. It doesn't look like he's around a computer to unmute himself either. So <laughs> no one can hear Dominique. I'm going to make the call here. Let's move on to something else till we got him. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh, no, come no, on. No, what are you doing? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube.com slash Levitard and Friends. Yeah, we, what, what was that sign there? No, this could have been an we, F1 you, six He was minutes. saying we were talking at 11. We oh, are going to talk it. at 11. He keeps giving you the sign. Yeah. Which is. Nick DeVries ready. only got 10. Ready. What is wrong with you guys? F1. There he like is. Chris, Chris texted me. <laughs> said, uh, do you want to do 1050? I said, no. You said 11 o'clock. And then I'm you appeared in the Zoom at 1050. Yeah, I was getting ready, making sure the camera. Yeah, we didn't you, you have know to bring him on the show. <laughs> no, no. Well, Chris didn't bring. Not. No, well, your audio is I terrible. I can't hear so. you. No, no. His I'm audio, talk, I, his we audio weren't ready. Great. Audio. Can we can hear him? Right? Yes. Good. I'm talking to somebody from your control room. Next thing I know, I see my. Well, I mean, I get it. You want to put my face up on the screen? It makes sense. I've That's missed, right. I've missed Dominique Foxworth. Can I say that? I miss I've, you too. I haven't done this with him in in months, and I've missed it. I have been appreciating your hosting just. I don't know that people appreciate the masterpiece that is your hosting. Like last, yesterday's show mm. was pretty impressive. Mm. I like what you do in the course of a show and you used to do this when we worked together is you're a really good listener and your brain is very strong. And then you go through the course of a show and create a thread between topics that does not exist. And it's pretty impressive to me. And it makes the show like engaging and fun and interesting, even when sometimes it's not, you know, <sighs> I've missed. I've missed. To get a compliment from Dominique Foxworth is a oh, hard thing. Oh, it's genuine because I want you most of the time. Exactly. You deserve to be shat upon, but it's the well. the the mansion of open doors that is your brain. It is so big and beautiful. But if you guys know this about Pablo, you can incept him very easily. You just gotta say a couple words, and he will eventually like they'll spill out of his mouth because he has no. Like real control out of no, what I happens. Don't. I'm gonna want to like make it a computer. bit. I'm gonna try and like <laughs> call back to it. No one else is gonna notice, but Dominique's been noticing it all week. Is that Lucy? Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, welcome, <laughs> Thank Loose you. the Tooth. I love Loose. <laughs> it's Dude, Lucy's so birthday fun. today. It is oh, my birthday happy today. Birthday, tooth. Thank you. Oh my God, are we <laughs> best it. friends? I think so. Like you came into the show like a, a zany lightning bolt the last couple of days, and it's really been fun. And your tooth is weird, and I love that too. And you're weird, and I'm weird, so I like weird. Oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. This is the best birthday ever. How is how is Dominique <laughs> better at hosting the show than I am? I'm not hosting the show. I also I appreciate old Slick Bottom Samson. I I love <laughs> Slick Bottom. He's well, I don't really like him. Smooth but... bottom, like the hairless bottom aspect. Yeah, that's yeah, that's it. It's smooth bottom. It don't get nice nervous. Nice to meet Daniel. you. Why are you sweating? Relax, baby. I'm your friend. <laughs> Deep breath. 
Okay, you good? <laughs> I like you, Slick Bottoms. I think that the character that you created on this show is outstanding. I know that you don't believe any of the horrible things that you say, but you recognize that every show needs a villain, and you're happy to step into that, and thank you for that. That's all. Thank you for commenting on my slick bottom. I heard only the compliments in that. that yeah, was right. that, that's all it was was compliments. Not right. And so I engaged with that so positively where Pablo said to me last night, hey, we're going to get Dom on the show. How do you feel about that? And I said, hell yeah, I want to meet him. Never met him. Yeah. This is going to be great. It was and great to meet you. Pablo was ready to do two segments or four segments, and then he bungled the entire thing because <laughs> you were sitting there and we were trying to do a different segment, and then you appeared, and Pablo got a little flustered. I haven't seen Pablo flustered this whole week. That's on me. I called the audible. Oh. I called the audible. Thank you, Chris. And I just, you know, I saw Dominique in there. I was like, let's do it. I want two segments out of Dominique. So I was like, we let's were, just do we it. We were right. off to such a good start, David Sampson. But what I'm not going to stand for is you throwing my guy Pablo under the bus. Oh, so. I'm a big Pablo guy. No, you don't have to worry about that. We are a team. What we've learned this week is that when Dan's not here, that all of a sudden we are plowing through – and doing the Ooh. show and Pablo leading it has been a tremendous boon to this show, in my opinion. If we can say more things that are great about me, I'd really appreciate that. www.pablo.show. No, what is Dominic? Stop, Dominic promote, that's, they're, they're, stop that. Stop <laughs> promoting your, your garbage podcast, all of you. Stop it. I have a podcast, too, but am I going to start saying the it, name it, of it? it no. Yes, you are. Make a, I make a great show, and then people come to it because it is effing awesome. And then, like, I'm not going to come over here and say, hey, I'm, 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 look at this beautiful set. It's so nice. Uh, the show must be really good, too. The Dominique Foxworth that. show is a legitimately good show. Clever name. <laughs> it, has, <laughs> it, it has... It has... Not just uh, Dominique's thoughts on sports. You guys demanded sports. I bring you a former goddamn NFL player. But I don't bring him on to talk about the NFL. I bring him on to talk about someone else who's been plowing th through some things. See, this is another thing about Pablo is if there's a sexual innuendo to be made, oh, that man ain't going to let it pass. You took your wife to see Usher in Las yeah. Vegas, Dominique. I did. You saw Victor Wembanyama. You saw Usher. But I want to lead with Usher. Because what is it like in that room? Because from afar, it just feels like it's full of pheromones. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's a fun experience. And he's an older guy, but still got it. And the performance was great. And he like did the whole dancing down in our section portion where he that got uh, Kiki Palmer a lot of attention, where he's like dancing on women and he was looking for the for women to dance upon. So in that our part, session. that part is real because there was that whole news cycle. Kiki Palmer got in trouble because her significant other did not appreciate how she was dressed in front of a seemingly gyrating Usher Raymond. Well, I don't think she got in trouble. It seemed like he got in trouble, but uh, I, I guess she got in trouble with him. But I don't think she seems to care about that now. But the point is, yeah, it's part of the show. It's that he does that. It's it's not a new thing. Like lots of entertainers do that. I know Janet Jackson like ties a man down on a board and dances on him. Like lots of people do sexy stuff at their show and engage with the audience. I mean, I was I've joked all week about how I intimidated Usher when he got near my wife, but in actuality, like I don't care. Like if if Usher wanted to dance with my wife and she wanted to dance with Usher, like knock yourself out we've been married for 13 years if that is all it takes to make me insecure and nervous then we got bigger problems so and also i don't have any like i think you probably have a history of issues you know that kind of leads into it where you get uncomfortable with that sort of thing so yeah mm. and also i mean look at me usher knew he can't compete <laughs> hell yeah like, let's be real. What's, Did you see my Instagram, my Instagram lately? Oh, my Instagram lately Dominique is the sexiest website on the internet. Posting thirst traps. On it. <laughs> yeah, get on there. Check it out, Luce. Check out that sexy, too. That was Jess. That was Jess. We played a oh, game earlier today, Thanks, and we you. talked about who we would like to be. And we were coming up with two different people whose lives we would like, and you can't say I know, your I heard own. That. I don't know if you heard that. I wonder yeah, if I Usher... Was, is that the first card you would play, or is he Hell the no. opposite of the card you would play? No, I think the problem with what you guys were doing was I think that you believe that life is enjoyable when there is no friction, and you're trying to pick people who have the friction, no, most frictionless life. And my experience, especially just getting back from Vegas, is I really enjoyed the 
four days and three nights I spent there with just my wife, in part because it was very different from the life that I live at home with three young children that is full of friction. I think the ups and downs are what make it great. And all you cowards who are like, I just want to be somebody who can hang out back and make a lot of money. Like, that sucks. Like, just being bored, uh, vacationing all the time, it sucks. Think about how great everything is. Is Like, it's always relative to what your experience is. So, like, I would love to take on a challenging job. I would love to be 5'5 five, five for a little bit and see if that um, made it more difficult for me to, to be successful in life. That would be fun. So, your um, draft pick, Dominique Foxworth, wants to be who? I would love to be David Sampson. <laughs> like it's it's really difficult to go through life with like concern for your fellow man like it's tough to be a competitive person who wants to win and wants to make a lot of money and wants to succeed but also hanging over you all the time is like man am I taking advantage of this situation I would like to know what it feels like just to be like I don't care yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know, let's kick them while they're down. Oh, they don't have any leverage? Oh, bleep them. Oh, they don't have support? Oh, who cares? Oh, Bob Ross just likes to paint? Give me that money, jerk. Like, that That seems like a thrilling existence. Whereas I just like, I don't know. I heard you guys yesterday, too, talking about the mean front of the line move. And this is where I mean blew it. You got to pay for everybody that you inconvenienced. Like, mm. you pay for the whole line. The Oprah the of White Castle? That, you you get a be. sandwich. You get a sandwich. I mean, I think that going to the front of the line and just trying to pay for the person at the front of the line is like a form of like crony capitalism where you're like, hey, me and this other crony of mine can use our advantage to buy our way out of all this other stuff. But like what you actually do, and I've done this and late at the airport trying to get some coffee. I go to the front of the Starbucks line. You pay for the whole line that makes I, that makes no sense yeah, to me but now you're how long do you have to sit there like now you were trying to do this quickly no, 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 no. and now you have to no, sit no, no, there no 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 you put down the bucks it's like you look at the line how much about all this gonna cost you put down the bucks you take your coffee first and you roll out that's i mean that's the move 500 hundred dollar cup of coffee it ain't tricking if you got it <laughs> hey <laughs> Tony knows what I'm talking about. I like the math, Dominique, of what you're doing because you have to calculate the size of the line times the average cost of the order. And that, to me, you're taking a chance if you're a mean. And I don't know that he's doing the math that quickly, but if you're passing ostensibly 50 people online, they could be each be getting burgers and fries and a Coke or who knows what they're getting. So you, I don't know how you estimate what to drop at the front and go and take care of everybody. If you got to look at the price tag, it ain't for you. Like you, you put down an extra amount that is also a tip for the people. Like it, it, I, it's not something I do regularly. It's not something I've ever done at a restaurant. It was just with coffee where it's pretty easy to estimate. But the point is you have to put down a lot more than you are planning to pay. But it's because different the people now. At the front. Because people yeah. don't carry cash the way they used to. So huh? while it's true, I like carrying cash generally for those types of tip moments to get something done that has to get done. Can I make another observation? I'm sorry to cut you off, David. You overthink everything. Like every topic is fun. It's fun. It's so, fun. And then you're like, no, let's get serious about this. Let's break it down. Let's get into the weeds. It's no longer fun. You got us doing uh, fourth grade math. Who came to work today wanting to do fourth grade math? Relax, David. You're sweating again. I Deep do breath. like to imagine David Sampson as like a cornerback. Like, wh how would he be calculating these split-second decisions? How would you be reacting instinctively as all of these threats are coming from all around you? <laughs> oh, he just tried to steal the money out of the pockets of the, of the receivers, and who cares if they score or not? As long as I could take advantage of them, then I win. It's not sweating. I'm not sweating. I should mention, and it you're has nervous. To you're, do I got you a little. I'm definitely you're a little not flustered. nervous or flustered. You're a little flustered. I am concerned that you have this view of me only in that what you think takes time or sucks the fun out of things. I think efficiency leads to me having more time to have more fun. I have a lot the of fun irony. In my life. No, the irony of this is you are trying to be efficient. Being efficient is nice. Planning to be efficient is boring. So I agree. Being efficient on the show is saying things that are worth saying. 
and thinking all the things that are not worth saying. You are saying the things that are worth thinking and sometimes saying the things that are worth saying. So like, hmm, what is worth thinking? How about let's do all the math of this situation for who could get to the front of this White Castle line? That's worth thinking. That ain't worth saying. Don't nobody care. The point is, I got off a good joke. It ain't tricking if you got it. I told you that a meme was being cheap, and we're rolling on to the next topic. That's Damn it. Damn right. Try to coach you up, baby. Everybody Tony, get better. Tony is Deep reacting breath. in the back row like he's at an Usher concert right now. I mean, because Tony knows. Tony is like Tony. Tony loves to not think. The funny thing is, <laughs> it's 11 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> and I'm like, drop top cruise in the streets. Got this real pretty, pretty little Samson waiting for me. <laughs> I pull up, <laughs> anticipating smooth <laughs> bottoms. Don't keep me waiting. I got plans. <laughs> He's never heard the song. I've never seen. Come on, Dave. No idea. <laughs> I don't Girl, have the you first know idea what, what he's doing. Oh, my God. Incredible. Another thing not worth saying. Incredible. How awkward is this, guys? I love it. I'm just going to sit here. This is how yeah, Pablo likes to be when there's an awkward moment. This is when he's channeling Dan a little bit. He, except what you'd be doing now is digging into the awkwardness. You'd be <laughs> trying to I, expose it and talk about it. instead. I will say, David, it. that I'm sorry I keep cutting you off, but um, you're boring. So I have to cut you off every now and then. The point is... What I was saying was a true compliment to you is that what you've done for this show is you've created a incredibly valuable. So it's like Twitter. We all go back to Twitter, even though it makes us angry. I think you say things that are so infuriating that I'm like, man, I got it. Like you are Floyd Mayweather of this show. It's like I tune in on Samson days, hoping somebody knocks you out. And I just think that is as it feels like I'm not a Samson fan the way I'm explaining it. But I think that. <laughs> as much as you calculate everything that you do, that this was a calculated maneuver where you're like, I'm going to come in and I am going to like be the personification of a Twitter post and it's going to get people enraged and then they're going to keep coming back and they're going to talk about me. Like who of all the new additions to the show, who has gotten Mike Sure to dedicate research and energy to come on to the show to try to to knock out Floyd Mayweather. So like I am being completely serious that you have mastered this heel role. Also, Jessica, what do you think about the Instagram page? What do you mean? Hot? No. I was I mean, I, there weren't that many thirst traps on it. I yes. I didn't really see any like I mean, I consider a thirst trap like a shirtless picture in swimming. Well, you got to understand beach. that Dominique yeah. needs to be graded Flexing. on a curve on Instagram because Dominique even Lifting referencing weights. like social media as a concept is progress. Dominique <laughs> has no idea what he's doing on the internet. Dominique so, has the worst smile in photos I've ever seen. He's only now making progress to be a respectable, like, poster of any kind. He himself up. wasn't I mean, really Hold poster. on, everybody's gotta hold on for a second. I just went on Dominique uh, Instagram. That that salmon color, pink color <laughs> knit shirt is fire. Fire. I got one of those, like an off-white, like a cream color. It's crazy. With a nice little rolly on the wrist, come on now. With the slim gold chain, accentuate them sexy ass clavicles. I didn't say you, di chest. you weren't well dressed. I just didn't like see the profile of a thirst trapper when I clicked nah, on your profile, which was what I was expecting given the hype. But I did follow you back, so uh, apologies. Um, the the it was a lot in Vegas on the stories, but I tend to believe that overt thirst trapping is unattractive. Like, I just gave him a little bit of taco meat. That's it. Just a little bit of taco meat. Now, if I go all the way down to the abs, that feels like the point of this post was for you to appreciate that I have abs. I want you to catch a glimpse. Just a little, I'm a little coy with mine. A little sexy coy. It's, David, how do you get sexy? Samson? Slick booty. What fish are you when you're sexy? Slick bottom. Where you at? I'm a shark. There he is. <laughs> all right, there you go. He <laughs> never sleeps. That's I don't, I don't Biologically sleep. speaking, always, that's accurate. I don't need to eat. And if something is in front of me that gets in my way, I'll bite it to get it out of the way. Although I don't actually Hell literally yeah. bite because that's gross. But, uh, yeah, I don't like to bite or be bitten, actually. But the, hey, if you, something's doing in my way. way. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> yes. So, so I, I mean, that's your style. And I think it matches your personality. But I would say, like, the shark is just... 
that's like going topless on Instagram and pretending like the reason why you're there is for some other reason. Like clearly you want people to appreciate your body. Like I more of an octopus if we're going Ooh. ocean animals. Like it's a little bit more cerebral and a little bit more coy and interesting. I, you know, like the shark's not interesting. And They're handsy. Tiny brains, dumb, a lot of teeth. Well, octopi have a problem. They're actually one of the I smartest. I mean, it's a, a, the plural is octopuses, so relax. <laughs> Oct- but I don't like saying that on the air. I was told not to say that on the air. Say octopuses? Yeah, By because who? that was, I get a list. Do you not, do you not, not get a list of octopus things? Octopus was one on the this, list. When you're doing plural this is another of octopus. Oct- example. An octopus another example. to do octopi. Octopuses. You know what I'm talking about. Another example. Opportunities. Things that should be thought that David thinks it needs to be said. Oh, I'm trying to just see why I'm the only one who gets a list like this. The James Bond movie. <laughs> That's something that you that want to movie, figure out during the I, break. I'm not going to say that. You're an up and coming media that. professional. You're outstanding. What is up Your and coming? Your podcast is great. Your podcast is great. You're really talented. You're raw. That's all. I'm just trying to coach you up, baby. Relax. You're raw. What you is your rate? Because I'm hiring you to coach me. What is your rate? Oh, I want That's this. That's another example. <laughs> I want this. No, I want Look this at now. That. Look at Come that. on now. I want some of that. Oh, I want some of that. I, I was responding to David asking to hire Dominique, but now I see that when I said I want mm. this, it was also mm. coinciding with his sexy ass clavicle. Oh, nice. And so I take a lot of pictures. The woman in that picture is my wife, who's also a guest on my podcast routinely on Roses and Thorns. But she and I take pictures together often, obviously, and she wins all of the pictures because she's beautiful and she spends lots of money on nice clothes. I got one dub. This is the first dub in the history of us taking pictures together. Is this picture now? And some wait, this is you winning. I, I, I yeah, this picture. Your face kind of looks like you got caught in like a wildlife camera. That's the point. That's the point. See, you guys again. This is from people who don't know how to be sexy. You think <laughs> that like that smiling and taking your shirt all the way off is sexy? Nah, leave a little bit. I wanted like, a nipple I, poking through one of those lattice like see, lacy. Yeah, we go. need a little too nip. much. Just yeah. a little. Now you gotta nip. imagine some nip. Is there, or somebody, a else? Button, is there somebody else grabbing your arm? There's a lot of hands yeah. in this picture. Yeah, that's uh. Somebody my got cropped boy. out. 